Okay, we're going to go over number 23 from the homework, which looked like this. You had a big old square root of 180 x to the third, y to the third, z to the fourth. So here's what I recommend that you do. When you have numbers and variables all under one big square root, just break them all up so they're all separate. So I'm going to deal with the square root of 180 all by itself. I'm going to deal with the square root of x to the third all by itself. I'll deal with the square root of y to the third by itself and the square root of z to the fourth. It's really just four mini problems all thrown together. So now I just have to deal with each one by themselves. So square root of 180. Start off, you got to think of what is the largest perfect square that goes into 180. Bigger. 36. 36 goes in five times. Yeah. So this is going to split up into the square root of 36 times the square root of 5. Okay, so that just gets me 6 times the square root of 5. Remember that this is all multiplication. It's all multiplication in between these. So I'm just going to multiply all my answers together at the end. Now let's look at x to the third. x to the third is not a perfect square, so I split it up into what? x squared and x to the first. Perfect. What's the square root of x squared? X. Just x. And then just bring down that square root of x there. Now do the same thing with y to the third. You've got to break that into what? Y squared, y squared and y to the first. So square root of y squared is y. And then just bring down that square root of y to the first. Square root of z to the fourth, that's just z squared. So I get to jump down to the bottom of that. Oh, yeah, thank you. Squared. Now I'm almost done. All I have to do is multiply everybody that's not in a radical and they go in front. Everybody that is in a radical, they go at the end under a radical still, okay? So not in, fr not in a radical, I have 6xyz squared. 6xyz squared. And then in the radical, just put them all together. 5x and y, 5xy. Before you move on to the next problem, stop and ask yourself if you need any absolute value. So we're going to go one variable at a time. Remember, there's really a teeny tiny 2 here. So even, odd. Do I need absolute values? No, it's only for even, even, odd. Even, odd. Do I need one for the y's? No. Let's try the z's. Even, even, even it came out. Do I need it then? No. This one, I don't need any absolute values. It's only when you had even, even, and then it came out odd. You would put the absolute values around that odd exponent. Okay?